Hi guys, welcome back. This is part two, talking about power profiles now. You're gonna catch me when I was recording before, um, and hopefully that helps you, and we go straight into it, and hopefully that gives you everything you need. Anyway, look after yourselves and uh, enjoy. Then next step is initial drive. Um, this is a big thing in stock, you can turn that up so then you have more punch at that bottom end to get rid of the low RPM usage, you don't need to use that in stock. Whereas in modified, I like to run the initial drive nice and low between one and two. Just keep it smooth as you're coming out the corner, um, but what you might, might find that you want it to get going a bit sooner when you're coming out of corners and you do want that bit of extra drive, it's basically like dropping the clutch on a car. Uh, obviously if you have a manual car um, with a clutch, um, but when you drop it with the revs high, it really gets it going, you feel the car send itself, and it's really good. So on stock, I run that a bit higher, because I don't have that power at the bottom end. In modified, I run it, let's say you put it up to three to help yourself get out the corner a bit harder when you get the power. What you find is when you're trying to move at slow speed, it kind of comes on like, gur, gur, like when you're doing it. That's because the initial drive is high. It's a brilliant tool to use, so make use of that. Then you've got torque feel, and this is one thing that I've found that some people get the wrong way around. So the lower the torque, the torque feel is, is basically you get the masses amount of torque at the bottom end. So you punch it and you will pull a wheelie. Whereas if you put torque feel at five, um, basically it fights, it won't let you pull a wheelie. You know, make it really smooth coming out the corner. And it's something we've used to great success on lower grip tracks. So you can gun it out the corner and it's just smooth. It's not just lighting up the tires. So torque feel five for super low grip and then zero for if you want to pull wheelies but really you run it on the second level for when we're on most surfaces and that's got the right balance of uh, uh, just controlling that torque curve um, and just keeping that power restrained um, whereas you want to go up to the four if you're on a if it's a wet track or it's some dirt tracks where there's not a lot of grip so that's a fantastic setting to play with so then if you go to the next setting, which is the fun one, this is timing. Um, and as a chassis to year again, we'll, we work backwards. So we've got delay, ramp, and timing is what we should be looking at. And first of all, we want to look at delay, and it's not a time delay, it's an RPM delay. And so if you're coming out of the corner, you want to be using the power in a certain way you're coming out. If we have the delay set too low, and we're punching, like we're coming through the corner, we're not ready to punch it yet, and then suddenly the car takes off and you've got oh, crashing into the barrier on the side there. It's because your timing is coming in too early. A nice way of coming out the corner without the car going all high wide and handsome is when you delay a bit higher. And we're not on like, let's say the third flash. That's coming in at 12,500 RPM. That's, that's a lot of RPM going on with the car. And normally by this point, you should be aimed straight. Um, you might find you're on a small track, so you don't want it to come in and all through the corners when you're jamming in. When it gets up to that RPM, if it starts applying the timing that you want, then that might upset you a little bit in certain bits. So I always like to run the delay a bit later, or even run blinky. In some cases, I find with some people it helps them because they've already got enough on the straight just with the blinky power. Um, so normally you'll run around the second flash, which is at 10,000. But if you want to smooth it out when you're coming out of corners and just want it to wait a bit longer, go up to the third flash. There's nothing wrong with that. The next step is let's talk about the timing and the ramp. So um, with the ramp, the ramp is basically well, how would you want to get there? Do you want to get there quickly or do you want to get there in a very smooth way? And with that ramp, um, you've got setting zero to 10 and the higher that number, the more aggressive it will be. As well as the timing, if we talk about the timing, which is on there, uh, which is the sixth mode on there, how fast do you want it to go? Okay, um, do you want it to be a missile eventually down the straight or do you want it um, to have a, a nice medium speed? And that's where you get the timing to run let's call it the seven setting um, and then you can go to the six setting for the ramp and that will get you there very nicely but normally you want to run the ramp a bit higher than timing just to get you to the timing mark you could run timing on 10 and ramp on one and it won't be as quick as when you run the timing on four and the ramp on three because the ramp on three has actually got you to some timing and so that's the nice thing so timing is what speed do you want to reach what kind of timing level do you want to achieve on the track and ramp is how quickly do you want to get there? it's very simple so those things work together to achieve what you want 
once that's all done, have a little look at protection. It's always good to wear protection and make sure that you don't kill those lipos and um, you just overheat the electronics. Um, but if you're not worried about any of that, you can turn it off and the instructions are on the website. Please check out the website. Um, there are set up sheets from various drivers from all over the world that Jurgen's worked with. So check out those. Um, and you might gain a bit more. Just one thing to talk about, you'll see a little bit at the bottom of this annual, um, and it talks about the thermal cutoff, ESC thermal um, cutoff, um, and it lets you know what lights are telling you are what. Then you've got battery cutoff, it tells you what's happened. The other bit is the locked rotor. Um, you'll rarely see that, hopefully you never see it. Um, as well as the one thing that I've seen from time to time is because I don't realise what's happened, but my sensor leads un um, come unplugged. All the lights are flashing um, and they're flashing fast. And it's because the sensor wire is disconnected. And so you'll see them now flashing. Um, and that's more of a common one if, if you were to see it and the speedo won't work because of that. Um, so hopefully that's been helpful to you. But um, I just want to say, if you've just done a run and you want to see how hot the motor and the speedo have got, basically you don't touch it with the controller, give it any power because that will wipe this. To check for the temperature of the motor, hold the mode button when plugging the battery in or flicking it on with the switch. Um, it might already be on um, and that will take you to the flashes. 10 flashes means it's got very hot and you're in trouble there so check your gearing or you need to run a bigger fan or a fan if you're not already running one. Um, I'd be looking at more of like six flashes or five flashes on motor temperature. The first flash is normally the speed controller and the other ones are for your motor. So I hope that's helped. Um, there's a good chance I've covered everything or there's a chance I've missed a bunch of things. Um, but this is stuff that we could work on again on future videos if you have any more questions. I hope I've helped you. Um, I look forward to seeing your comments and uh, seeing you all at the track. Hope you're all keeping yourself safe. I'll see you soon. Bye.